report. Right, so it's the end of uh, turn six for the British. It's turn six for all of us. And more chipping away has occurred. Uh, the rapiers got back in, uh, unbailed or whatever, took out another helicopter. Ah, uh, some... Uh, can't see very well from back here. It's a bit crowded in this room. Um, Harriers turned up. And the AA for the Russians did very little, actually, despite this huge number of dice. But then the Harriers' uh, template only chipped away at things as well. In the centre, um, so Amelia had some vehicles come in. They machine gunned the hell out of the Afghansi, who um, are suffering, taking very heavy, heavy casualties. The interesting thing, though, is that for all the casualties that have been taken on both sides, there are bits here and bits there. Most of the casualties are not uh, actually wasting entire units. So in terms of victory points, it's quite low. Now, we're stopping now because... We're running out of time, and Emilio is telling me that the British are definitely not conceding, even though they're the ones who seem to have run out of time. Uh, so the, the situation tactically is that we've eroded the British so much that we can make a major push on both flanks, certainly on one flank, probably both, uh, with a fairly good odds of getting through. It'll just take us another two or three turns to actually dig these big ass British platoons out of the goddamn woods. But we have ample material to do the job with. So it's a question of time and do we want to play for another hour or two? Um, so you can see the, the amount of operational equipment here is quite strong. We'd move Shilkas out, the infantry out, another infantry platoon out. Few tanks basically just pile a shed load of heavy and light arms onto these chaps in here. Choppers, uh, we're finding out the hard way just uh, how big a deal it is to have to limit your air attacks to units that are eight inches away, and that's really why all the rest of the Russian equipment is so far back. It was so that the choppers could have a free run at the chieftains. Now, the fight in the middle has been fantastic. Brutal as all hell, although not as much melee as we thought. Um, and it's really sorted out the AA to the point where we could bring in so much air power and not have it fall out the sky straight away. Uh, let's just note as well that the Brits the Brits are proud in the centre. Proud. Uh, it's probably a best fight there. Well, you know, there's not a lot of that British platoon left because of all the fire that's gone into them, but they're still there. Yeah, and our kill ratio is 2 to 1. Yeah, uh, easily. I mean, we tried some crazy things like running uh, Polish infantry up the street, thinking we were going to pin the bastards, then jump on them. And, of course, I didn't pin that turn, so that fucked that up completely. And uh, I'll just uh, shuffle past. We've got a reasonably well-intact British force there, so that's going to take a fair bit of work to jump on as well. So the British, look, they can't win from here. Well, actually, with the dice rolls we've had today, if they were reversed, we'd, maybe they could. But in all likelihood, the British were going to get pudulated off the table. But um, they've actually done a really good job of being tenacious and hanging on. There's zero prospect of the British capturing the red objectives. But, uh, but there'll be a lot of work involved to finish the bastards off. Um, so, gentlemen... What have we learned? Artillery is extremely effective. It was very good. Yeah. Right from the get-go, um, four batteries of artillery did <laughs> horrendous damage. My chieftains were the worst of it. Well, that's true. We actually knocked out... Two chieftains from artillery. Two chieftains with artillery, um, which really thinned down their return fire and, and enabled other units to then gang up on them. It's worth noting, it's 180 points a side, so four templates of artillery is probably not that unreasonable. No, I didn't think it was excessive. It, uh, it was certainly entertaining. What else? Um, your infantry was actually very good in the centre, so three, three companies of Soviet infantry wore down a British infantry platoon and took out pretty much the air, with a bit of air support doing it. Um, so mm. they were actually quite effective. Compare them with the British infantry, who are still reasonably intact in, on both objectives. And in the centre. But they did... Those two platoons did nothing in the entire game. 
No, they, they were guardian yeah. units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so in this battle, you know, points return. Those, the Soviets and the Poles gave return, and mm. the British infantry didn't. You know, we, we mm. traded position for, mm. for points. The uh, rapiers, fantastic. Um, you know, they uh, yeah, took yeah. out four. Four choppers all up. Four choppers all up. Yeah. So under under distress, they uh, were exceptionally good. They well, held out. Th uh, three, three choppers, I think, in the end. So yeah. reserves are right, essential. Sorry, choppers, yeah. uh, what did we learn? Reserves. Uh, our reserves oh. came on thin you got, you got and they the, came on late. You got the absolute bare minimum that one should expect. Yeah. Uh, in reserves, and uh, if you'd rolled for reserves as well as we'd rolled for reserves, it would have been much more of a two-way yeah, battle. Yeah, possibly the Plain Centre. Um, yeah, I think as well, if you look at the terrain from the beginning of the battle to, to the end, there was an advantage um, for the Poles and for the Russians because you had lots of buildings and lot, lots of cover early on in the first two turns, uh, whereas we tended to be on the objectives or out in, the, out in the open trying to spot the enemy. And uh, so it was really hard from a terrain perspective for us to uh, do an offensive. So we were naturally sitting in a defence position and you you took the offence Well, you know, the interesting thing about that is I think that the, uh, the British have done what the British do, mm. which is use the terrain for defence instead of for attack, whereas the Red Forces have done what the Red Forces do, which is to attack. Um... And I think the combination of, um, well, your reserve roles, frankly, were woeful and ours were pretty decent, uh, combined with the fact that I think the Red Forces coordinated what they were doing slightly better. Yeah. Um, the British could have taken more AA than what you did. I think that wasn't the most important thing, uh, supporting the AA um, and having a buffer. So if my team had actually sat there at the beginning and provided that buffer, the AA would have had the numbers. Yeah. So at least so a contest against your enemy. You, you were perhaps a bit over-invested in the flanks and the cover yeah. rather than protecting the AA. Yeah. Uh, so that, yeah, look, definitely if you'd protected your AA more, then uh, they would have done quite a lot more damage to the air power. Yeah. Uh, I still think a third AA platoon probably would have helped out a bit. Mm. Uh, those blowpipes turn out to be cheeky little fuckers. They do a lot of damage. Um... Yeah, this, this is an interesting playing to type. I think that whenever you play a defensive game where you hug your cover and hug, hug your objectives, you can stop the other guy winning, but you can't win yourself. Um, would have taken us a bit longer to actually win than what we've actually got to play with. Well, look, that was a blast. This is the biggest game we've ever played, ever. Uh, we played such a big points value in order to allow a, uh, a challenger table to be on the t company to be on the table, and then we didn't have a challenger company on the table. <laughs> but my God, do we have a lot of other stuff? But tonight, a challenger company wouldn't have worked with the tactics, no. or even with the reserve outcomes that we had. Uh, yeah, so, in well, fact, there probably would have been a lot less tanks on the ground. And we were in, even forced to be relegated to even more of a defensive position. That's an interesting point because almost all of the tank casualties came from artillery and air. Yeah. I don't think there's any direct fire to the front. I certainly tried. Yeah, I, well, I think you, maybe you took out one, maybe Did I? two when the, the T-64s t turned up. But that was it. Everything else would have made absolutely zero difference because it would have punched right through those uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. Well, there's an interesting consideration. Yeah. I love so, the Challenger, but fucking hell, what, what, a, what a point sink. Would not have worked. Yeah. All right, well, on that note, uh, I think it's time to call it a day.